Does anybody remember in Gen 4 going to Mindy's house in Snowpoint City and her telling you that she will trade you a Haunter for a Metacham? This seems too good to be true as you can find Metacham in Route 217 which is directly below Snowpoint City. As you are dreaming about you and your Gengar taking on the Pokemon League, you find out that Mindy's Haunter is holding an Everstone. Like seriously Game Freak, why did you do this? That was the first pick of the 23 most annoying things in Pokemon. So if you enjoy this type of content, please leave a like on the video as it will mean the world to me and subscribe to the channel so we can defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. So now let's continue. One of the worst changes that new Pokemon games have made is getting rid of the national decks. Every game from Sun and Moon to now doesn't have the national decks, meaning that hundreds of Pokemon are stuck on your older games. I know that Pokemon Bank and Home are essentially replacements for the national decks, but not being able to use them in Scarlet and Violet in other new games is very disappointing. Mega Evolution is the best game mechanic that Pokemon has made in a very long time, being universally loved in the community before they disappeared forever after Let's Go. Only X and Y, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, and Let's Go have Megas, and I really hope they come back one day. Megas made a lot of cool Pokemon that were not viable to use in a playthrough or competitively finally usable and gave them their well-deserved spotlight. The Safari Zone has to be one of the most infuriating experiences in the Pokemon games. Only having the option to throw bait or rocks instead of battling wild encounters with your team makes absolutely no sense to me. Throwing a rock makes the catch rate higher while also increasing the rate of it fleeing, and the bait makes the Pokemon more likely to stay, but harder to catch. There are hundreds of videos on YouTube of people failing shinies in the Safari Zone, and if you find one, there's about a 50-50 chance of you catching it, and there's nothing you can do to increase those odds. Version exclusive Pokemon have been around since Red and Blue. As a kid, and even to this day, I would have such a hard time choosing what team I want to use because some of the Pokemon are only available on one version of the game. Also, if you want to complete the Pokedex, you either have to trade for all the version exclusives or more likely, you have to buy both versions of the game. Honestly, I didn't think many people bought the double packs they sell now, but when I went to GameStop to buy Violet when it came out, there were three people in front of me that bought the double pack. There was even a lady who bought two double packs. When the slogan is gotta catch them all, and you can't even do that without both copies of the game, that seems crazy to me. Whitney's Mill Tank. This thing is a demon spawn from the deepest depths of hell. Mill Tank has a base stat total of 490, which is really good for this early in the game, and you will have nothing close to that total in your party. On top of that, it knows Milk Drink to heal itself, Stomp which is a 65 base stab physical move, Attract, which will pretty much always work because it's a female and starters have an 87.5% chance of being male, and Rollout. If you choose Cyndaquil like I did, good luck defeating this monstrosity. You'll need it. I think we've all seen the video of Blissey's health in Diamond and Pearl, but after replaying the game recently, everything about this game is slow. The text, the battles, the surfing, and there's even a pause between every attack and the health bar lowering. It was so slow that I had to speed hack on emulator to be able to finish the game. If you think Scarlet and Violet lag and frame drops are bad, go back to the original Diamond and Pearl. Oh, and that reminds me, Scarlet and Violet lag and frame drop rates. Yeah, we all knew this one was coming. It sometimes feels like you're playing in slow motion, which is crazy because the graphics are also really bad, making you wonder how the game lags in the first place. I really did enjoy the open world expansion of Scarlet and Violet, but man, I cannot ignore how awful the game looks and runs sometimes. If you've ever played a Johto game, you know how terrible the level scaling is. For example, the 6th gym leader has a higher level Pokemon than the 7th gym leader, there are level 6 Pokemon in the wild between gyms 2 and 3, and there is a huge jump in leveling from gym 7 to gym 8. In HeartGold and Soul Silver, you go from a level 34 in Price's gym to a level 43 at Claire's gym. What sense does that make? You can't even grind in this game, because the highest level Pokemon in Victory Road is 36, when the champion has a level 50. 
The Diamond and Pearl Gym Leaders and Elite Four members have the strangest teams I've ever seen. Flint only has two fire types, Valkner has an Auxiliary and an Ambipom, and Candice has a Metachamp. Who programmed this game? They fixed their teams in Platinum, but then proceeded to change their mind when making BDSP. Seriously, why do we not get a Platinum remake? The Battle Frontier used to be a staple in all Pokemon post games, but now for some reason, it sometimes is in the post game and sometimes isn't. The ultimate meme is when Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire said that it was under construction and was never playable in the remix. The Battle Frontier was a great challenge for trainers who thought the main game was too easy. I still to this day have never even beaten the entire Battle Frontier in any game, but I still enjoy the challenge that it provides and I wish that there was one in Scarlet and Violet. I swear, all of the coolest Pokemon are locked away behind trade evolutions. Especially back in the day, it was very hard to have a link cable and then the item needed in some cases for the Pokemon to hold to evolve. Even now with online trading, it annoys me that I can't just evolve it on my own. There's no challenge involved in getting the trade Evo Pokemon. It's just very tedious and I wish there was an alternate way to evolve them. Pokemon X and Y introduced the EXP share going to every Pokemon in your party, and ever since, it's been a staple in the series. I think I can speak for everyone when I say that we will at least want an option to turn it off. In my BDSP playthrough, I literally put my team in a box because they were getting too overleveled and I used a second team. It also changes the entire system of how to play the game. Now, you can just mow through the entire game with one Pokemon, and everyone else on your team won't be too far behind. For something to be so universally hated and not changed throughout the years, that's crazy to me. As a kid, I remember getting the Riolu egg on Iron Island and leveling up immediately to get Lucario, until he was level 40 and hadn't evolved yet. I then learned that he evolved by friendship with only one NPC in the entire game in a random location telling you how high the friendship is. To this day, I still hate friendship evos. The game doesn't ever tell you how to increase your friendship with a Pokemon. There are specific steps you can take to increase its friendship, like giving it vitamins, walking with it, and giving it haircuts and heart gold and soul silver. But if you don't know how to do this, you basically just have to play through the game with it and eventually it will evolve at a random time. Also, did I tell you that if it faints in battle, its friendship plummets? Good luck. I think everyone watching this video at some point in their life has spammed through the Nurse Joy text while healing their Pokemon and accidentally started another conversation with her. If you've made the same mistake, comment Nurse No Joy in the comments. I've done this multiple times in a row before, and unlike the other spots on this list, the only person I can blame is myself. All roaming Pokemon are extremely tedious and annoying to catch, but especially the legendary dogs in Fire Red and Leaf Green. All roamers are annoying, but the dogs in the Gen 1 remakes take the cake. You have to beat the entire game and catch Mewtwo in the post game before you can get one of the dogs. The dogs you get are determined by your starter choice. Charmander would give you Suicune, Bulbasaur would give you Entei, and Squirtle would give you Raikou. It's the same tedious process of fighting them in the routes, but if they ever use Roar at any point in the battle, they erase themselves from the game and you can never find them again. I seriously don't think anyone play tested Fire Red and Leaf Green sometimes. When you're about to get through all the grass in a location and you encounter a Pokemon on the very last tile. So annoying. Also, fun fact, if you ever played through Diamond and Pearl or just any Gen 4 game and have thought they had a lot of encounters in them, specifically for Gen 4, if you're running in grass, you are more likely to encounter Pokemon than when walking for some reason. Okay, Game Freak, that is actually so dumb. Garbodor. That's it. Just Garbodor. Moving on. To this day, every Pokemon game only has one save file. Seems like a pretty easy quality of life improvement, but hasn't been intimated as of recording this video. Multiple save files are near the top of my wishlist for Generation 10. 
in multiple Pokemon games, including Fire Red, Leaf Green, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, Black and White, Black 2 and White 2, and X and Y, you have a chance of finding a shiny Pokemon during the caching tutorial. When the professor is sending out a Pokemon, or when you are battling a Pokemon after getting your starter. I could understand if this was a one-time mistake. Everyone makes mistakes, but Game Freak has just kept making it possible in barely half of their games. Gen 1 Psychic types are the most overpowered thing I've ever seen in a Pokemon game. There was no physical and special split back then, so they were heavy hitters. They were supposed to be weak to ghost types, but a programming error made them immune to ghost types, making the only type they're weak to being bug types. And you know what the most powerful bug type move that a bug type can learn was in Generation 1? Pin Missile and Twin Needle. Sabrina would absolutely destroy you in Gen 1, and Game Freak even knew how good psychic types were. So they introduced dark types and made it super effective against psychic types and fixed ghost types in Generation 2. The fact that some people say that new Pokemon designs are completely unoriginal, even though they'll defend Pokemon like Voltorb and Muck in Generation 1. And last but not least, the worst gym puzzle, Lieutenant Surge's Gym. Mindlessly searching for switches and trash cans is not fun and has nothing to do with electricity. Also, if you have to find two in a row, if you don't know how the puzzle works, if you don't find the second one immediately after the first one, the puzzle resets and switches are in new cans. I struggled with this for so long as a kid that it took me a week to figure this puzzle out. And here's the funny part, the game doesn't even tell you this, but the second switch will always be next to the first one, either to the left, right, above, or below the first trash can. And once again, the game does not tell you about this. What else is new? And that, guys, is going to be the video. If there's anything about Pokemon that is annoying that I missed, I'm thinking about making a part two to this, so let me know what you find annoying about Pokemon games. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe as always. Stay awesome and peace out.